Okay, so this is the exercise, and we're going to try solving this in Java 7. So I'm going to create a new class here called Unit 1 Exercise Solution Java 7. And uh, I'm going to have a main method here. And what I'll do is copy this over so that we can replace these comments with actual code. All right. Now, the first thing I need to do is to sort the people list by the last name. Now, I'm going to do this in Java 7. How do I sort a list? Well, you have this utility called collections dot sort. And now this has a method which takes in two arguments. One is the list that needs to be sorted, and one is the comparator. There's also another signature which basically takes this in, uh, which starts a list in ascending order based on natural ordering. But what we need is to create a custom ordering. We want to have a custom ordering based on the last name, which means that we're going to have to implement this competitor. So I'm going to choose this option. I'll first pass in the list, people, and now I need to pass in a competitor. Now, competitor is an interface, right? I need to create an implementation of that interface and pass an instance of it. I could create a separate class and then say new of that class, which implements competitor, but I can just create an inline anonymous class here instead. So I'm gonna say new competitor. And now this is gonna be an anonymous inner class. What does this need? It needs, I would add the unimplemented methods here, just needs one method called compare. Now I need to implement this compare method. Now this competitor is a generic method. Now the T here is of type, person. So I'm going to pass that as an argument, a generic argument, which means that these two will be person objects as well. Now I need to implement this. How do I implement a competitor that compares the last name and makes sure that the last name is ordered in ascending order? So what I can do here is I can return name dot compared to o2 dot get last name so i am basically leveraging the compare to operation on the last name string and i'm comparing these two instances that i'm getting over here so when the collection starts sort gets to action and tries to sort the people it's basically running each combination through this comparator's compare method so it's okay given a person o1 and a person o2 what should the sorting order be? And we have set this based on the last name. Okay, so now that I've sorted this, the people list should contain the sorting based on the last name here. Now, one way to check if this has worked is to actually print it, which it turns out is step two over here. So how do I print all the elements in this list? Well, notice here that I've actually mentioned to create a method that prints all the elements in the list. So I'm gonna create a method called print all and uh, I'm going to pass in the people list now print all needs to be a static method in the same class so I'm going to create that here and uh, the implementation here is fairly obvious I'm going to have a for loop here people p in sorry person p in people I'm going to do a system dot out dot println of p. Now this is going to call the toString method of person and we have a fan, you know a nice toString implementation which shows the object in a nice format. So this should be good. I'm going to go to the solution again here. So this is step two which is to print all people. Let's execute this and make sure that this is uh, this is working fine. So if I were to run this up here you can see it's printed all the people, but notice that the last name has been sorted. I have Arnold, First, Bronte, Carlisle, Carol, and Dickens. So it's sorted based on alphabetical order. So step one is done and step two is done. Now for step three, we need to create a method that prints all the people that have the last name beginning with C. So we have to filter out anybody who does not have the last name beginning with C. Now what I could do here is Create another method, which says something like this. Let's say I do a print 
last name beginning with C, and then I can pass in people. Now, if I were to let me spell this right, if I were to implement this method here, which is going to be another static class, it's going to be pretty much the same here. Instead, I'm going to have an if condition here when I loop through and I check if the last name does indeed begin with C. So I can say something like this if p dot get last name dot starts with the letter C, only then I print that person. All right, if not then I don't print that person. So that's this method. And of course, print all is unaffected now. Let's run this. Now here you see it's printed the list, but the second time you notice it just prints two elements, which is Carlisle and Carol. This is good, but as you can see, this is not the best of methods. This is very, very inflexible. If you want to print people with the last name beginning with D, that means you're gonna to have to create another method. It's not ideal. So what we'd like to do is have a behavior passed into this method. So I can have some kind of an object that acts as a filter, right? You're not really specifically mentioning what that filter should be. You can write a method here, which is basically the same as print all, but rather than print all, it's let's call it print sum. And then you have uh, some kind of an object here, which indicates what that list should be. It indicates what you need to filter out or what you need to retain. So let me try that. Let's say I say print Instead of beginning with C, I can say print conditionally. And then I can have some kind of a condition here. Now condition needs to be some kind of an interface. So let me actually create an interface here. I'm gonna create an inline here and say interface condition. And then let's say this condition interface has a Boolean test which takes in a person p so it's basically looking at it's a, it's a method which looks at a person and says whether that person should be included or not for something like you know printing the last name beginning with c this test method basically checks if that person's last name does indeed begin with c now i can use this condition to check if that condition holds good for p so let's say i do something like this if Condition dot test of p, then do a system dot out dot All right. Now I can use this instead, and now I can create. I can pass in a new implementation of this condition interface. I'm going to say condition, and now I need to implement the unimplemented method, which is the test. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say return p dot get last name starts with C. So it's basically the same as what we did before, but rather than the method itself containing explicitly what needs to be done, I'm basically putting that into a condition object, right? Condition being an interface. And then I pass in an implementation of that interface, which has a method called test. And it basically says, okay, this test passes only if the last name begins with C. Now, that, if that's the condition that's passed, well, that's the condition that gets selected. This method doesn't really care. It just prints a list conditionally, no matter what that condition is. Now, you could have another condition, which uh, you could say call print conditionally again, which you know checks for the first name that begins with let's see uh, with let's see C. All right. Now I can run this again, but with a different condition. So it, the same method still works. Let's see. I do. Uh, first name beginning with C. Now let me add some messages over here. Let's say system.out.println. This is printing all persons. This is all persons with last name beginning with C and I'm going to have one more with the first name beginning with C. So all that changes is the condition and this 
print conditionally method doesn't care. It just executes the condition and it runs that for each uh, person in the people list. And if that condition is met, it just prints it. So you can pass in different condition implementations to the same print conditionally method and have it print different stuff. So let's run this. Now here is printing all people, which prints everybody. This is printing people with the last name beginning with C, which is Carlisle and uh, Carol. And this is the first name beginning with C, which is these two persons, all right? So this is how you can implement this exercise using Java 7. You have passed in a behavior by implementing an interface and you created that interface. Now you know that in Java 8, you can skip the implementation and use lambdas. So let's try that out. I'm going to create a different class here. I'm gonna say new class, and this is unit one. Exercise solution Java 8. And uh, paste this here and just change the name. And uh, of course I don't need the interface here because it's already defined. Now let me make sure this works fine. So this is still the Java 7 way, right? This still works fine. Now let's change all these things to lambdas. Now here, let's start with the step one. Step one is to sort the list by the last name. Let me remove this stuff here. Now what do we, what do, we do here? We are calling collections.sort with two arguments. The first argument is the list to be sorted. The second argument is an implementation of the comparator. If you notice, comparator is basically an interface which needs the implementation of the compare method. And since there's only one method here, well, guess what? Comparator is a functional interface. Since it's a functional interface, you can actually pass in a lambda instead of this inline anonymous inner class and it'll still work. Collections doesn't see the difference, just thinks it's an implementation of comparator while you're actually passing in a lambda. Now, how do I pass in a lambda? Uh, the lambda here is basically an implementation of this function over here. It's uh, basically a compare method, which takes in two objects, just person one and person two, and then it returns this expression with uh, the last name being compared, last name dot compared to the second last name. So let's do that. And we have a function which takes in two arguments, person one and person two. I can do person p1, person p2. But since collections knows the type of this list, see this is list people, which is a list of person, right? There's a generic type here already. So we don't actually have to specify the person over here. So let me remove that in a bit. But what does the Lambda expression look like? The Lambda expression is, i have copied this, p1.getLastName.compare to p2.getLastName, right? This is all that's happening in the body. Now, since type inference works, I can remove these types and this will still work. P1 and P2 are obviously of type person. The compiler figures that out. So this is it. We have passed an implementation of the comparator to collections.sart, and we just did this in one line. Let me actually run this. So this happens, sorts the list, and then the next set of lines actually prints it. This method should still work. So if I were to run this, as you can see, the first section, it is sorted based on the last name. All right, let's implement step three creating a method that prints all the people that have the last name beginning with the letter C. Now, what did we do here? We called the print conditionally method where we passed in the list of people and then we had a condition that was an inline anonymous class implementation. Now, condition is also an interface that has one abstract method, which is test. So we could use a lambda here instead of the selected block, which is the anonymous inner class. So this could be a lambda. Now, what is that lambda? It's basically a method which takes in a person object and it returns a boolean, whether that person object has a last name that begins with C or not. So this takes in a person object. Since it's just one argument here, I don't have to put the parentheses, right? It's just one argument, so can, that's optional. And what's the body? The body should return a boolean, it says if the last name begins with C. So it's basically p dot get last name dot starts with C. All right, and now I can do something similar for printing out people who have the first name that begins with C. It's very similar, except that the last method here changes. I'm gonna copy this over. It's just gonna be the first name here. 
All right, let's execute this. And uh, this, the first thing we've already seen, for the last name beginning with C, we have these two. And for the first name beginning with C, we have these two people. So that's all good. Now here's another thing we can do, and of course we can do this optimization in the Java 7 version as well. So you have a print all, and we have a print conditionally. But print all is basically a print conditionally that has a condition set to true always, right? So we don't really need these two methods. So I'm gonna get rid of this, print all. It's always gonna be print conditionally, which means that I'm gonna have to call print conditionally to print everybody, but the idea is, what's the condition? It's always true. So I'm gonna say p, takes in a value which is the, per the person, then it always returns true, right? This is a very simple Lambda expression, which is a simple implementation of the condition class. So here you see for something as simple as this, the implementation is just one word. This is one of the shorter Lambdas that you can write. Now what's gonna happen is this is gonna create a Lambda expression which acts as an instance of condition that always returns true. So it's gonna do condition.test on that lambda expression and guess what it returns all the time? It just returns true. So system print always executes and we're gonna print all the people. So let's run this again to make sure we get all the people and we do. So here you see we have made the code very, very terse. It's not as long and complex as the anonymous inner class over here, right? The only argument that people have had about this kind of a code is that the Lambda expression is not familiar. It takes some getting used to. But having said that aside, and of course this familiarity leads to you being a bit more comfortable with these Lambda expressions. The more you write it, the more familiar you're gonna get. And then the advantage of it being you know, short and crisp really stands out. So this was an implementation of that exercise in both the uh, Java 7 approach and the Java 8 approach. So feel free to play around with lambdas a little bit more, see where you have opportunities to use lambdas where there are functional interfaces being uh, accepted as arguments. And trust me, it's really fun. So this wraps up unit one. And with unit two, we're gonna look at some more features that Java 8 introduces when it comes to using these lambda expressions and some more shortcuts you can use in your code to make your code a little bit more readable. So see you in the next unit.